have received this gift from the Lord, the gift of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, then you have within you the greatest gift that any man could ever have. Compared to this gift, the most, the richest man in town is a pauper if he does not have this gift. This gift gives you everlasting life. The gift of God's Holy Spirit that you receive by asking for it. This gave you a, an assurance of everlasting life both here and in the hereafter. When God's Spirit comes in your heart, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the life of God is implanted in you. They're given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, and by these we become partakers of His divine nature. And that's your gift. As we come in the inner journey of prayer, we've come to release that gift so that God's Spirit can wash our minds and renew our thinking. That He can come over here in the area of our will and He can work in us both to will and do His good pleasure. We've come to ask Him to work in the area of our emotions. cleansing and washing out the negative emotions and then giving us His Spirit in this area of our life so that the fruit of the Spirit of love and joy and peace and gentleness and goodness and mercy and faith, these things would flow out from Him. And we've come to release the Holy Spirit in our lives. Then when we finish this exercise, we'll move immediately into the journal where we will write we will write our prayer which we've already done over here. We wrote, wrote our prayer that we're going to pray when we get here. And then we're going to write what God said to us. And you put your name already now underneath that prayer that you've already written out in your daily moral inventory here. Write your name, dear, whatever your name is, and we're going to ask God to speak to us. The Bible says, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit would say to the church. So we're going to do that. We're going to ask God to speak to us, and we're going to write in our journal what God says. Are you ready? Okay. Are you ready for the inner journey? Okay. Put everything in all your papers, kind of put them out there, get your pencil, and get, it, get your, your journal ready to start writing. It's kind of kicked back now, and we're going to start our inner journey. By closing your eyes, you enter the prayer closet. That's a beautiful, profound thing. It, that wherever you are, you can enter the presence of the Lord. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. This is God's invitation to you. Jesus said just to you, he said these words, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. 
take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. You will find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. So we have this invitation, don't we? We're coming at the Master's invitation. We've been granted this privilege to come boldly to the throne of grace. The Bible says that we have a great high priest who can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. We have one who was tested in all points as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. The greatest of all commandments, Jesus said, is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul. Now just do that. Just love the Lord. Appreciate you, Lord. Thank you for giving me another chance. Thank you for letting me wake up alive this morning. Thank you for all the friends you've given me. live around me to encourage me and speak into my life. Thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you for this tremendous opportunity to change my life. Thank you for the hope of the future, Lord. Thank you that when I leave this place, I'll be different. That I won't go back into the world of chemical addiction. But I'll be a free man. I'll be an overcomer. I can have healthy relationships with my people, my family. Thank you for this, Lord. Let praise and worship begin to flow in your heart. Thank God for Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtained a good report. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. That's what you're doing right now. You're seeking. time of cleansing. This is the gospel. This is the good news. God's made provision for our cleansing. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is his promise. 1 John 1, 9. So I pray now the prayer that I've written. I don't want you to read it to the Lord in your spirit. I want you to pray it to the Lord. Dear Jesus, this is the areas of my life I want you to work in. is where I want you to work. This is where I need cleansing.
ask him a direct question. Jesus, I've done what you told me to do. I've confessed my sin. Will you forgive me? I want you to begin to write in your journal the answers and the instruction that God gives you. Begin to write now in your journal the impressions of your heart as the Holy Spirit from within washes, cleanses, now begins to instruct you. All scripture is given by inspiration from God. It's profitable for your teaching, for your correction, for your reproof, and for your instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be mature, overcome, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Let the Lord instruct you now in how he wants you to live this day. Put your hand in the shepherd's hand. And he will show you how he wants you to live and what he wants you to do this day.